investors are worried, uh, markets are reacting to that. Uh, why, why wouldn't they be worried? Uh, everybody's thinking about uh, inflation. Can the Fed really engineer a soft landing? COVID lockdowns in China, are they putting additional pressure on the supply chain? Uh, so this is, this is all making up for a perfect storm and uh, volatility. Guess what? Volatility is going to persist. Uh, if you like volatility, fasten your seat belts because this is going to be a bumpy ride. Yeah. But let me tell you yeah. one thing. There is one thing that doesn't lie, and that's flows. Money rarely lies. And in the last week, we have seen flows coming fast and furious into the QQQ and QQQM. We registered something like $1.5 billion of new money coming into tech this week alone. Yeah, but what does that tell you when, and here's what puzzles me about this week and the past couple of weeks, this was a lot of the data that we were waiting for. We were waiting for earnings and guidance to the degree that we would get it. We were waiting to hear uh, not only exactly what the Fed was going to do with rates, but what the messaging was going to be around that. And, you know, my thought was maybe we'll get some clarity around that and volatility, at least for a short period of time, would die down. But that didn't happen. Post earnings, even though a lot of it was positive, you know, the market's jerking around quite a bit. Powell, perfect example. Shoots up, then shoots down, uh, and now we're back to break even again. If, if we've got volatility with information, my goodness, what are we going to do without information? I totally, totally agree with you, John. It, uh, it puzzles uh, me as well because uh, information is there and information is, all, is not all that bad. And if you look at uh, tech companies and what they registered this quarter, is actually pretty good information. So I'm looking at uh, Amazon Web Services, for example, which is the cloud of Amazon. That arm delivered $18 billion in revenues, and that's 36.5% year-over-year growth. Uh, look at the Microsoft Cloud as well, which is, uh, you know, revenues grew by 32% in the most recent quarter. It's now over $23 billion. So numbers are good. It's just... Uh, Everything that is around the numbers is all the uncertainty about the other factors that companies and investors cannot control. This is what really contributes to what we are witnessing today, which is a period of heightened volatility. However, volatility does not equal bear markets, and people forget that. Anna, um, if ETF flows are a good proxy of where investors think the money is. I wonder what you make of Kathy Wood's ARK ETF receiving its biggest inflow in a year earlier this week. Her fans are buying the dip despite the performance. What do you make of that? Well, investors are buying her high conviction. Uh, so ARK is, uh, is a proxy for concentrated strategies, uh, taking risks with uh, a manager that has a really high conviction. Uh, this is not dissimilar from what we see in our flows, even if our strategies are different. Uh, I mean, as I said, we registered $1.2 billion of flows yesterday alone, and yesterday the fund was down 5%. So to me, that really indicates the fact that uh, there is a little bit of uh, um, fear of missing out from investors. They, they don't believe that the technology sector is under pressure and those companies are set to fail. So investors are really trying to jump into the sector again when they believe that information is going to become available, something is going to change in the uh, macro uh, level, and uh, uh, you know, numbers are going to turn and are going to come around. We, we, we have a high conviction that this is going to happen in the queues. We have a high conviction in the tech sector. So I'm, I'm really not surprised to see that. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll just about call it a week as we continue to wait to see how this day plays out. Anna Paglia, Invesco Global Head of ETS and Index Strategies. Thank you. Thank you.